Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today, I am excited to be talking to you about a question, actually, that I got in the comment section of one of these YouTube videos, which was, can you please explain rev seller settings so that we know how to set these things up? And so I'm excited to go through that with you because the settings within rev seller will be what truly determines the profitability, the numbers that you see on the front portion of rev seller. Now, for those of you that don't know what rev seller is, it's a Chrome extension. You do pay for it. And by paying for it, you're able to see on an Amazon detail page or product page, the profitability, the sales rank, and so many other things I'm going to show you here in just a second. There are other options such as ASIN Zen and other Google Chrome extensions that do similar things. I personally like RevSeller. I've been using it for a very long time. It's my favorite one. And so today I'm going to go through those settings. Now, if you're interested in a discount code, you can go to bit.ly forward slash replens RevSeller, and you can get the link below. You should be able to see that in the description. If you want a discount your first year of a rev seller subscription now without further ado let's go ahead and get into the settings and i'm just going to go ahead and share my screen real quick okay as you can see right here this is just a random product detail page i decided to go to on amazon i just looked up equate products and clicked on one of the first ones that i found this is rev seller you can see that it shows you the rank that this product currently has it shows you what percentage of sales rank that is as well as the 90 day average price the average rank for the 90 days and the average amount of drops which would be sales rank drops and that would be the minimum amount of sales that has happened over that 90 day period. And it's typically gonna be based off of Keep Up product information. Now you can see here, it also has FBM information and FBA information, how many FBM offers there are and how many FBA offers there are that be fulfilled by Amazon or fulfilled by merchant. And you've got sell price, buy cost, and then the net profits, ROI and margin. Now I just have some information listed in there for you and I'll show you the settings in just a second. Additionally, over here, you can see the ASIN, uh, the weight and the dimensions of it, as well as the size of the products. You know, if it's a large standard, it's an oversize, if it's a small product, etc. It also tells you if it were less than $12, that this could qualify for small and light. So if I put this at $12, you can see that now it shows a small and light with little checkbox. That's because it's using reduced fees if the product was priced at $12 or less based on the current small and light maximum price. So if that goes up in the future, it may be 14 or 13 bucks, whatever, depending on when you see this video. But currently it's uh, listed at 2287. Uh, so let's go back to that. See the ROI and the margin. If you hover over any of these little I uh, sections, you can see that it pulls up more details of the fees that are coming out of the profitability of that product. So you can see all the detailed information. This will be based off of how you set up the settings within RevSeller. I want to go over this real quick first. Now over here, you can also see the low FBM price, the low FBA price, the buy box price, uh, and then the Amazon price if Amazon was on this listing, but they currently are not, nor would they be since this is a Walmart specific private label product being Equate. And then close within FBA. So what that means is within 3% of the lowest FBA price, that's how I currently have it set up, there are seven sellers that are within 3% of that low FBA price. Even though there are 26 FBA offers, there's only seven that are within 3%. Now you can actually have it set up. You can see whenever I hover over this, that it shows four FBA within 1%, seven FBA within 2%, and seven FBA within 3%. Since I'm hovered over this, this really tells me a bunch of information. I can set this up to show me by default the four within 1% of the low FBA. I currently have it within 3%. I just like that number. Uh, and so uh, I'd like to see how many, the maximum amount within 3% of the buy box. But many people will price 3% higher than the buy box. And so I really like this depending on the repricer that you currently use. Now, if you click on this graph button, you can actually see that there's a small keep a graph here. It does not show the new seller count and it gives you the amount of days at the bottom. So if you just want to see the last 90 or the last 30, you can do that. It's currently set to all in this case. Uh, and if I actually scroll down to the actual keep a graph, you can see it's the exact same as this upper box, but it does not give the very important information of this new seller count. So this would not be a listing I would jump on just because the sellers are going straight up there and the price is uh, right enough, fairly so, coming down uh, with the sellers coming up. Continuing on, you can see that uh, if you click on offers, it will show you all of the seller names and what type of seller they are, their ratings, uh, when the products would ship and their prices. If you really wanted to get into details of those offers. Personally, if you have a Keepa subscription, I actually never take a look at the graph because I just go down to Keepa, look at the full entire graph and I can check out all of the offer information by clicking through Keepa, clicking data and then clicking on offers there. If it would load for me, there we go. So I can see a lot of information just utilizing Keepa. So I very rarely use this portion of RevSeller. However, it can be very helpful. Now you can actually have this information copied by clicking on this button right here 
here. If you copy that, you can paste it in Google Sheets or Excel. So if you're trying to track a bunch of different data points for different products, maybe you've got a virtual assistant or multiple team members that are looking at products and they're finding ones that they want you to purchase, where you can have them copy all of this information, put it into an Excel sheet, and then it will all be in the same format for you or another person to review later and make the buying decisions from there. Now here, max cost is another thing that you can set up within RevSeller. I currently have it set up with one setting of a 30% ROI being my max cost that I could purchase this at because it defaults to that 30%. If I were to put this at $10, you can see it says $4.38 or 44%. But if I click on max cost at 1106, it brings down the profit and the ROI. You can actually set up multiple variables within the settings. And I like that because it can be a very quick way to source. So if you're looking at a product that is $12 and you see the max cost is 1106, you don't have to go through the trouble of clicking through and clicking $12 because you know that it's not profitable if it's over that max cost amount. I personally like it pretty quick and easy to get to. Additionally, you can get to keep up by clicking on this button, camel, camel, camel. If you click this, the Amazon calculator, if you click that, and then there are other links as well. If you wanted to see reviews, if you want to see any of the Amazon offers or anything external for eBay, Google, Amazon, or Walmart title searching. If I wanted to search Google for the first six words of this, I would click that button. It would open up the results based off the first six words that it deems would be the Google search. So it helps you to actually source more products. It helps you to find maybe the ability to list this on eBay. So many opportunities here. Up at the top, you've got hazmat. You would also have, if this were a multiple product, a multiple notification. This product is not hazmat. If it were red, then it would mean that it is hazmat if it's uh, you know grayed out like that it's not hazmat or it's unknown and then yellow means that you may actually uh, not have a hazmat approved selling account but you may still be able to send it into fba i rarely see yellow it's typically red gray uh red or gray so um, that's usually what i see and then if you can sell it based off your seller account it will highlight this green if you aren't logged in it will let you know that you need to sign in and if you can't sell it it will be red up top and then lastly if this were multiple it would give you that multiple notification but since it's not uh, that is not showing up right here it would be red and it would uh, be an m-e-l-t for melt now let's get into the settings so if i go to settings here you can see that there are a ton of different settings within this uh, google chrome extension and so what i recommend just going through this one by one shipping revenue this would be the standard merchant fulfilled shipping revenue that you use so if you typically have five dollars there's a flat rate shipping on most of your products and you could add that and it would add that to the purchase price of the listing there's other fees as well that you can put into here if you want them subtracted so if you pay someone to fulfill your orders, like a dollar per unit, if you're using a prep center or you're paying a specific person in your local area, you can put in those as a fee as well. Now it will currently, if you check this box, give you the ability to set up FBM ship estimates. And those estimates are the way that I set it up is using USPS and using the middle zone of five. So it even explains it if you hover over the eye that zone four is a shorter distance than zone five. So zone four is uh, shipping estimates will be a little less than zone five estimates. So we like to put it at five. You can put it at eight if you want to see the most expensive shipping zones, but there's three options, four, five, and eight. We select five for that. However, if you wanted to for FBM, you could do dollar per pound. You could also do flat rate depending on your needs and your business. Now, if we're looking at the FBA price, you can do a ship to FBA dollar per pound. Now, for some people, if you're a new seller, you might want to put 50 cents per pound. Essentially, it will automatically calculate the estimated amount of fees that you're going to incur for shipping this product into Amazon based off your average shipping rate per pound. In our business, it's 25 cents per pound. And so that's why we've got it in there. For some people, it's 10 cents per pound. If you're using uh, LTL shipments and you're an advanced seller, you can use a much lower rate per pound. If you're newer and you're sending in fewer items in, the, in FBA boxes, it's going to be more expensive per pound. So just figure that out in your own account. It will help you to uh, be much more streamlined in your sourcing so you know that you're calculating in all of those fees. Now, I also have it checked to use a grader of the the dimensional or the actual weight. So that just means that we're not accidentally showing too low of a fee. We always have it use the greater option. Other again would be prep fees or any other kind of things like polybagging, labeling, etc. If you wanted to do that, we currently don't put that in there, including the storage fee. If there is a storage fee for the automatic calculations at Amazon, we always include the storage fee because there may be storage involved. And then we typically for our monthly storage fee, put one month. Now you can put as many months as, up to 12 as you want. We like to use one because our typical turnaround is 
is 30 days. For some of you, if you have a 60 day turnaround, I would change this to two months. Or if you have a much longer holding period, maybe you're selling shoes and clothing and it could be three, four months of holding, then you could put that in there instead of the one. By cost sales tax, uh, typically we're purchasing sales tax exempt using a prep center in a sales tax exempt state. You can also get sales tax uh, exemption there. So we have it at 0%. If for whatever reason we do have to buy something with sales tax, we'll just include it in our buy cost. So instead of five bucks, it would be $5 and 50 cents in that case. So we don't ever mess with this to have it automatically calculate. Now here's where you can set up the max buy cost rules. So you can see I put 30% ROI, but if I also put 30% ROI with a $5 net as my minimum, then I, and I go back to the settings here, you can see that instead of that 1130, it was 938. So if I click on that, it'll say, oh, that's a $5 profit. And that's actually a 53% ROI. So depending on what you want your minimums to be, you can actually set that up. If I come back and I clear this out and just keep it at that 30% and go back, you can see now it's at $11 and six cents. And I can click that and it'll show it $3 and 32 cents of profit, 30% ROI. Now back into these settings, you can also change the margin if you wanted. We currently just use ROI as a minimum ROI for our maximum buy cost that we can have it calculate. This is pretty standard buy cost decimal places, leave that at two. Using list price for the buy cost, we don't do that. That just is not something that we are currently doing. Uh, it automatically populates the list price found from the Amazon listing details in the buy cost. That's frequently inaccurate. So that's why it's kind of a warning that they're telling you, but in certain categories and situations, you may find value in it. So for instance, maybe you're buying an Amazon product to flip it on Amazon, you could use the list price instead, but I don't really recommend doing that. How close to lower your fulfillment fee limit? This is something I actually don't know what to do. So we leave it at 10%. And so I just leave that there. I'm going to be honest, this is one I've never messed with. The little bubble does not give any additional information. So if somebody knows that, please comment below. Let me know. It's one I actually don't know what to do with. So general, here is where you can see pop out position if you want top middle, top left, all of these different things. Where do you want this Chrome extension to pull up? Default condition is new. That's what we do because that's in our business, but you can also use used if for some reason you are selling used products. Small and light checked. We always leave that there because we want it to give us the ability to populate that if the product is $12 or less based off the current maximum small and light fees. Auto update and smart inputs. We don't do that. We leave it unchecked. Essentially what that does is if you were to enter in a cost of $5, it would automatically update the profit. We like to hit enter and so uh, that's what that does. If you were to select this, it would automatically update it. I like to make sure to hit enter and you know, that it's all correct. So that way it's not dynamically updating faster than I want it to. Hiding text pop-ups. Uh, so this is something, if you want the info, text pop-ups to appear. So they still show data pop-ups like net details, long-term storage fees, et cetera. So, but if you don't want the info text pop-ups like these, these little eyes to appear, I can check that. And I believe if I hover over these things, let's see, maybe I was wrong. Let me go back here. If I hover over the info right there, it doesn't pull up the pop-up. So it doesn't get annoying. I actually like to see them. So I like to leave them unchecked. Now under amazon.com here, you can also add other header links. So I'm just going to put an example and I'll have to reload it in a minute. So I'm going to come back to this as the last one. Now sell prices and offers. We use the buy box, then the lowest new price. Some people like to use the lowest FBA, then the buy box, then the lowest new. I always like to compete against the buy box. So that's how I set it up. Default offer count is active condition. And then underneath offers within percentage of FBA, I showed you earlier, you can do 3%, 2% or 1%. We like to use 3% as the uh, most amount. So that way we can see the max amount of sellers within 3% of the buy box or within 3% of the lowest FBA price. ROI method, we divide by buy cost only. And the reason we do that is because we like to make sure that uh, we're using the same standard across all the different products that we're selling. Now you can have it divide by buy cost plus settings fees, which is also including things like inbound shipping and buy cost sales tax. I don't like to do that because I feel like that doesn't actually go directly into the product itself as a buy cost. You can use that one if you want. The one that I do not recommend using is the third option, which is dividing by the buy cost plus the setting fees and the transaction fees, which is, includes all Amazon fees, inbound shipping, buy cost sales tax and other. To me, that one is adding in too many things that don't actually totally affect your actual investment in a product. And we want to make sure that your ROI and your profit percentages are based off your actual investment to purchase that product. There are no Amazon fees uh, for transactions if you don't sell it. So that doesn't really help uh, unless you are selling it. And even then it comes after the fact, it's not an actual investment of yours. So I recommend either dividing by the buy cost plus settings fees, or what we use is to divide by buy cost only. Uh, ROI and margin decimal places, that's fairly obvious. 
uh, show ROI, ROI and margin at the bottom. We do leave that checked. So for targets, we actually leave these defaulted. This is how they were currently set up in our rev seller. We have never touched them. I haven't seen the need to touch them. We're gonna leave them as they are. If you wanna dig into those a little deeper, feel free. It's just not something I've ever needed to uh, mess around with. Graph, automatically show graph. That would be the Keepa graph that I showed you earlier. I, since I have a Keepa subscription, I do not have it automatically show me the graph, but it does default to 365 days for the year, which I appreciate. And then it shows the new, the third party sales rank. And if you wanted, it could show the used. And it would also invert rank axis if you wanted. We don't have it do that just because I like the way that it's currently structured. Variation viewer, we also leave these here. Ignore sellers with zero feedback and click to open filters instead of hovering. Now copying and export, you can actually have it set up to copy certain things and you can pull over the items that you want it to copy for you. So it's uh, it gives you a bunch of instructions how to do that. If you're gonna use the copy and paste into Google Sheets or Excel, that is the button you would wanna click and to be able to set that up and also to be able to just export it directly to a Google Sheet. Now, lastly, I would show you how to do these links. I could actually say, okay, let's uh, just do Ask Jimmy Smith um, and I could set up the website description and I will leave that. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna refresh it. And whenever I refresh it, you just see this pop up and it will actually have a link at the top ask jimmy smith and then it goes to my website if anybody's interested go to askjimmysmith.com but you can use utilize this if you have a repricer and you want your repricer to if you're looking at current products that you're selling you can set it up to link to your repricer for that particular product click that button and it will open up the repricer page for your product that you're looking at on Amazon. You can make all your adjustments. You should be good to go from there. All right. That is the Rev Seller settings explained. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I'm here to answer as many as I can, except for the ones I didn't know the answer to. But ultimately, I hope that this video helped you and blessed you. Let me know if there's anything else that I can do for you in the comments. I'm happy to make more videos based off of comments and questions you leave for me. But without further ado, I hope that you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.